let's say these are valid, valid scenarios where I need to have this variable reference in two different functions and the vendor does as well. They need to have a variable, right? So you could come down and say, well, uh, we just need to rename the variables, right? So maybe the vendor could say, uh, since this is, you know, vendor, I'm putting my vendor name and you're going to put a vendor uh, page on everything, right? Yeah, that could work until somebody else who was a similar, had similar name, also named the variables that way, right? So we're going to undo those changes so that the vendor global variable is still page and our variable is page. But what we can do in JavaScript is we can actually wrap this entire thing in its own function. Now, right now we're having errors because we, we're not, uh, we need to do something else besides this. This is not valid. Uh, but what is valid is the fact I can put uh, parentheses around this. Okay. And so now that's valid JavaScript. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have a name, so it can't really be, you know, nobody can call that right now. Uh, but what we can do is put an open and close parentheses on it. And the idea is we have this function and we are executing that function. So just like in our app.js, so I'll do the exact same thing over here. Okay. So over here, we have function, right? Opening that function. Then we're closing it down here. But again, we want to put these parentheses on the end of it. The parentheses could actually go here as well. That's valid as well. Um, you'll see it both ways. I personally like them on the outside. Uh, other people um, do not. So, you know, uh, just do it whichever way makes you uh, happy or whatever way you're, um, you and fellow developers agree upon if you're working with other developers on the project. But this is called a self executing anonymous function. An anonymous function is simply, in fact, let me make some room down here. An anonymous function is simply function, no name, and then, you know. So we have this anonymous function, but it's, it's getting an error because it's kind of expecting a name. But the idea is we could then assign that function to a variable. So we could assign that to the variable anon or any variable we wanted. So the idea is this is an anonymous function, so I'm just uh, making it the variable anon. And then we can actually call that function just like we would anything else, anon with parentheses. So that's what we're doing here, is we have a function. It's an anonymous function. But instead of assigning it to a variable, we're wrapping again in parentheses, and then we're going to execute it by having these double parentheses. And it's the exact same thing as having a function here, and then executing it down here by having the two uh, parentheses. So this is a typical pattern you'll see in JavaScript code, and this is a pattern that you should follow. It's a way to make sure that your code is separated uh, from somebody else's code. That when you have to have a code like this where you have a page and it's referenced in multiple functions, that it is not in global space. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this anonymous function here. Okay. So now, when we run this, what's going to happen is it's going to load up vendor.js and it's going to run this anonymous function. So it's going to create this function and then it's going to run the function. So when it runs the function, it's just as if we didn't have it inside of um, 
this anonymous function at all, right? But the reason why we do have it here is so that all of this stuff is inside of this function scope and not inside of a global scope. The same is true with our app.js. We have this function. We have all this code inside of this function. So when the page loads, it's going to do this stuff. Again, you'll see this is still a global variable and this is still another global variable. Okay. And that's bad. But we'll fix that in a minute. But as long as we are good developers and put the var keyword, as long as it's inside of a function, we're in good shape. Again, if we had a var page out here, we're going to be clobbering that namespace. Now, unfortunately, since the vendor has his code right, it actually won't cause a problem if we put our uh, if we put ours in global space. But again, you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that all your variables um, are inside of a function so that you're not in global global namespace. Now we have one more thing we need to fix up before we can run this and see if the change actually actually fixed our problem. And the thing we need to work on is the fact that, hey, this is an anonymous function now, right? And by its nature, nobody on the outside can get to this function. Okay, and that's a problem for us currently because over here in our HTML, we're trying to call that calculate page function. So we want to call this calculate page, uh, but we're not going to be able to get to it because before a calculate page was in global space, right? So we could call that function because it was in global space. But now we have encapsulated that function around this uh, anonymous function. So we've uh, made it so that our page is protected. It's not going to get clobbered by anybody else. Uh, but it also means that our page is being hidden from other people as well. So let's fix that. 